here today to show you another fun fold. It's called a pinwheel tower card. And what's really fun is it folds and it can fit in a regular size envelope. But when it's open, it makes this neat little pinwheel shape and can stand up. So it's four-sided and you have a lot of options to decorate it there. So this one has not been totally decorated, but I'm going to show you the basic format, how to do that, and then I'll show you when it's all decorated. Also, the one I'm going to show you is going to feature the Penguin Place stamp set and the punch that goes along with it and the fabulous coordinating paper that you could only get during celebration. So only until the end of September 2021. So if you're watching this before that time, hurry and place an order of $50 or more and you can get that for free. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and stay tuned toward the end for some extra little surprises. For today's pinwheel tower card, we're going to start with these pieces. We need a piece of DSP that's going to be our center that measures four and a half by four and a quarter. It can also be four and a quarter square, but if four and a half gives you a little bit extra um, room to be to glue it all together. With our scoring tool, we want the four and a half across the top, okay? So we're working at four and a quarter tall because that's how tall our card's going to be. And if we're starting like this, it's going to be tall four and a quarter, like a regular, regular card held horizontally. So that's what we want there. We want the four and a quarter, the tall way, we want four and a half, the wide way. And we are going to score at every inch. So I'm going to move my cutting blade out of the way, make sure I'm using my score tool. I'm going to score at one inch. Now remember when you're going through DSP, it's a lot thinner than your cardstock. So I might go over it a few times, but I'm not really pressing hard. I just want to go over lightly to make sure I get that score line without poking through the paper. Okay, we're going to score one and two and three and four. That's going to make our center core. I've seen some people do this a little differently with some cardstock, um, but by using the DSP, it makes it just a little bit thinner because you do have a bunch of other um, layers going on in here. Okay, so the part that you want to show a little bit on the inside, you see how I have this striped here? Um, the part that you want to show on the inside is going to be inside your fold. So, I don't want this part to show, although it's awfully cute. We're not really going to see that on the inside. So I'm going for a more graphic look for the inside. And we're going to take our bone folder and burnish those score lines. So we're going to end up with like a little square tunnel, so to speak. And then we're going to turn that into our little box. All right. So normally when I'm doing a 3D box of some kind, I normally like to keep the short end tucked in so that you don't see that seam on the outside. But for this, we're going to be covering that anyway. And what might be exposed are the corners. So rather than tuck that little piece inside and have this edge kind of showing. I mean, it's not going to see it much, but I just would rather have the nice smooth um, corner there, the, the fold. So I'm going to actually bring my flap across the top there. So a little bit of glue on there or some strong adhesive. Because it's sort of an interactive card, you want to make sure you have strong adhesive. So we are going to Put that glue there and just make sure our ends line up. And with the glue, you have that little bit of wiggle room to make adjustments. All right, so that's going to be the core for our tower. All right, and then I chose white for this card 
to feature the DSP. You can play around. You can have a colored cardstock here too. That works as well. But on this one I used white and on the one I'm making today with the penguins will also obviously have the white. So you need four, one for each side, and these measure two and three quarters by four and a quarter. We're going to glue those down to each side of that little column that we just constructed. All right, so I'm going to put my glue on these pieces here. I may as well start where the um, seam is there. Okay, I'm just putting it on the one side of that column. And then I'm going to line up the paper with that column, make sure it beats up at the top and the bottom, and that folds. Okay, again, by using the liquid glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room. If you're using other adhesive, then just be real careful before you make your final <laughs> placement. Okay, so then you have that. All right, then you're going to do that on each side. So I'll fold it down, put some on the next side, line it up, okay, see what I mean, how you, you know, a little bit of that fold can sometimes peek through, so I'd rather it be a fold rather than the rough edge. All right, two sides done. I'm going to fold it flat and put adhesive again two more times and we'll have our four walls. Okay, so that's your basic construction right there. And like we said, it can fold down and fit into your standard envelope, which is really kind of neat. And no tricky instructions on how to open it. People will see that right away. Okay, so pretty cool. All right, so now we're going to decorate it. So with your DSP, this is where you need a piece that's quarter inch smaller than this. So we're looking at two and a half by four. Okay, I have something different for each side here planned. So let's see, I'm using the um, the Penguin Playmates DSP. So here's one of the prints with these little guys and the dots on the back. So I'm going to glue that down here. Okay. And then I chose to alternate a, a picture and then a graphic, a picture and a graphic. So my next graphic side is going to be this striped pattern. That is the flip side of this that I'll use on one of the others. The colors on this pattern paper, designer paper, are Misty Moonlight, Soft Sea Foam, Just Jade, Fresh Freesia, Calypso Coral, and Ami Blue, and Basic Black. Okay, and so here's one of the other sides. You have 12 by 12 sheets of paper but you can always cut out a piece that you wanted. So I wanted this little polar bear to be the center of my card. He's outstretching his arms. I'm gonna make him hold a little something. So I made sure to cut so that he was centered in this, in this piece of paper here. So I'm gonna glue that down on my next panel. So I have a graphic, then an image, a graphic, and an image. Okay, and then the next side, I have this little polka dotted graphic again. So 
there you go. You have something different on each side. On this one I used with the beautifully penned, I used two different patterns and just alternated. So I have two and two. And you can um, do whatever you like, really. And this one I used a DSP on the small pieces. On this one, I'm going to actually use some cardstock to have something um, more plain on the side and decorate that in different ways. All right. Okay, so let's do, um, oh my. All right, let's do this one here. I have chosen Bami Blue to go over here to match up with this. And I decided to pick up on these little trees that are in the pattern. And on the stamp set, there are some little trees. Unfortunately, there are no dies for these little pieces, but there is a punch for the penguin. I'll show you that in a second. So I just stamped these trees and I fussy cut them out. I stamped two full strength and one I stamped off just to have an odd number of three. Before I do that, I'm going to take some Bami Blue and I'm going to stamp a few little stars because there are some cute little pieces here that come in the stamp set. You have the eyes, you have the bow tie, you have their his foot, you have stars, a little, I guess that's like a, a bubble, I'm not sure, a little heart and the beak for the head on and the side view. Okay, so I am going to use the star and just put a few random stars around here and we'll put the trees amidst there. You want to make sure some are going off the paper. Don't want to do too many. Just want to have a little bit of something there. And I'm going to attach my trees because the light one seems like it's more in the distance. I'm going to put that one a little bit behind the other. Although on one of these panels, I am going to use some dimensional dots. I don't recommend doing too much because it will, your card will not lay as flat as you would like. But I just couldn't resist when I was doing the penguin to put some little dimensionals on his feet so that they were sticking out toward me. But that's the only spot that I did it. Just that one panel. Okay, I'll put another tree up here. Okay, and then I'm gonna glue that down to the skinny side over here as a complement to the DSP. And this penguin set comes with several different sentiments. Some are birthday, some are Christmas or winter holidays. So I chose to go with a birthday theme rather than a, um, or the one says cool, be chill, be merry or season's greetings. So I, I didn't go that direction. I met, went more with the happy birthday and the friends. So on here, I'm going to use, let me clean off my stamp set first. You can see my chamois is well used, but even though it stains, it still rinses clean and you can use it again and again. Okay, I'm gonna close up my stamp set, my ink pad rather. And on here, I stamped be cool, be chill and be merry, but what I've done, and I finally got the nerve to do it, I told you guys about this before, is I cut my photopolymer stamp so that I took off the Be Merry and I just was left with Be Cool, Be Chill. I stamped that onto a little scrap piece of white and I'm going to put that right on there. Normally, if this were the front of my card, I'd put that up on, you guessed it, dimensional dots, but I'm not gonna do that. Now, I don't wanna hide this little bird, so I'm just gonna put this way up at the top. I didn't wanna cover any of these little guys. Isn't that little bunny cute? Normally I would have put maybe an oval there, but you know, I said, I don't want to cover any of those guys. They're all so cute. Okay, so this one panel is done. I'm going to flip it and go on to the next one. 
Okay, so this side I'm going to put um, Misty Moonlight on the other side. And we're going to build a penguin to put over here. Actually, two. I already did one, and I'm going to show you how to do the other one. So before I put this down, though, I am going to stamp a few little hearts. Teeny tiny heart stamp there. And we will do that in the Misty Moonlight color, tone on tone. When you're inking these up, be especially careful not to push them into your ink pad and get them all gushy because they are so tiny. You just have to do little tiny taps. So kind of what I did with the stars. Let's get a few around, not to overwhelm. Just enough to show the love. Okay, look how cute. It's adorable. All right, so let's build our penguin. This is so cute. Okay, so we have a penguin punch that looks like this. I mean, a penguin stamp that looks like this. We have the punch that coordinates with it. There are two ways you can build your penguin. You can punch this big part out of black and this little part out of white, which is what I've done here. You can layer them. You can stamp the eyes and stamp the feet, or you can stamp one foot at a time and punch it out here. And I'm gonna show you that, but I'm just gonna actually stamp my penguin today. Although this is awfully cute and it does come out nice and black with the cardstock, but I'm going to stamp it. So I have a scrap of white. Now something to think about, when you want to punch him out, you're flipping it over and you're going to line up your um, penguin guy right in there. So I'm going to feed it in this way. So when I, I'm going to be aware of which way I want to stamp him. So I'm going to stamp him up to the top over here. So I'm taking some Memento Black, inking him up nice and dark with the photopolymer. You can really see that you've got a lot of ink on there. I'm going to stamp it down. And there we go. There's a the little guy all ready to go. And I'm going to stamp his little beak. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take that heart off that I used before. Exchange that for the beak. And using Calypso Coral, I'll put it right down, connected to the little black there. Look how cute. Oh, he's adorable. <laughs> Just love him. Okay. And now I'm going to punch him out because I want to attach his feet separately so that they pop out. Um, actually, you know what? This one I won't. This one I'll just stamp because I did pop out the other one. So I'm going to take, there's this, um, there's a stamp that has the two feet together and then there's one that's single. The single one is what I punched on a little piece of white and fed it into my punch and I punched out one at a time. If you want to put them two, the two together, you can use the stamp that does that. So let me put the little individual foot back using the double one. Why stamp twice if you can only stamp once? Okay, they're even laid out a little bit. There we go. And then we'll feed that into the punch upside down, line it up. And give it a little punch. Okay, you want to make sure nothing else is down there because you might catch the foot. All right, so we're going to place that little guy there. Here's the other one I did where I popped the feet up, stamped them individually, punched it out with the punch, and just put them on with some dimensional dots on there so that they're really 
just popping out a little bit. So those two little guys are friends. All right, and so that guy will go there. This guy's gonna be holding a balloon. One of the stamps is a balloon and the string. So one thing to remember with the photopolymer is that you can move it. So even though this string looks straight for this balloon, I can move it a little bit because unless it's a very heavy balloon, um, you know, or the air is still, you usually don't have such a very straight balloon, so a uh, string to your balloon. So I'm going to actually turn it just a little bit so that it looks like, it looks a little bit more natural. Let me put it that way. Okay, and I want to arrange it. I'm going to stamp right onto my um, DSP here. I want to arrange it so that it looks like this little guy is holding the string. All right, so I'm going to stamp it first and then I'll put the penguin over that. And the balloon I have on dimensionals as well. I figure if the feet are on dimensionals, then this could certainly be on dimensionals too. All right, so that's going to go there. But I do want to be careful of where I'm going to put my sentiment. So before I line everything up, I'm going to work that out. So here I go. I'm going to show you. Don't get too excited. But I didn't, um, I guess I could fit if I wanted to put that there. But if I want to, I could cut this and put it um, in a separate little area over here, which is what I was thinking I would do because um, I wanted something here. So it could go either way. Right, here I go. Ike! Believe me, I was getting so nervous when I before I started doing this, but it really is easy um, to put it all back together again. They fit right up. Don't do this with your rubber, but when you put these back together, they kind of stick right back together where you cut them from. So it's pretty easy. So now I can just put that on my block. Actually, with these that are so little, it's best to just lay them down and then place your block on top. Okay, to the coolest friend I, friend ever. So now I can fit that onto this little oval that I'm going to kind of fit on here. It can kind of go out on a diagonal. Or I could use one of my other smaller punches, but you know, I think I'll just make that a little whimsical. So I'm going to do that in, um, what color should I do? Something different. I'll do, let's try fresh freezer. If it's too light, I will flip it over and use a darker color. Right, the freezer is a little bit more, ooh, a little bit more cool color anyway, right? The coolest friend ever. So maybe I'll just stick that on top there. Okay, I want to make sure it's not going to get caught in the fold. You do have a little bit of leeway past the colored cardstock or the DSP, whatever you use there. Okay, let's stamp our balloon string because these two little guys are friends. So, and he's giving him a balloon. Or her, whatever. Remember, you can stamp right on your DSP. I'll put my balloon up on the top. There we go. And this little guy is just going to hold that down there. Because his feet are popped up, I don't want to add extra depth by depth by popping this guy up. And I do see a little smudge down there. Again, some people won't notice, but I'm going to cover it up. Okay, so there we go. So we have two sides. Okay, this side I'm going to stamp the little snowflakes that come in the stamp set. And call it tone on tone, fresh freesia. So you're actually doing like four card fronts on this, but it doesn't have to be as complicated as this. So this is really more the avid stamper level where you would do all these neat little die cuts and punches and backgrounds and using all your stuff, right? Um, 
So there we go. Now let me show you this cute little trick. I just thought that this guy was supposed to look like he's holding a banner of some kind. And, and what better thing to put over here at, um, but I like you a lot -le. And then you put, it's like a little except a lot. So a little corny, but it's cute. <laughs> so cute. So I wanted it to be swag, I like a swag. So this is what I did. So it looks like he's going to hold that. So let me show you how I did that real quick. I started with a piece of coral because I wanted it to really stand out against the other colors. And I ran that through my mini stamp and cut, um, my cut and emboss machine. Took a circle. I'll give you which ones they are. This might be number, if you're starting with the smallest one in the layered circles, smallest is one, this one could be five. Um, so I'm going to run that through first and then stamp and then cut the middle part out. So here we go. I could do both, but then if I make a mistake, I'm like, oh, got to do it again. All right, so we're going to take our black. And like I said before, the photopolymer is bendable. So even though in the stamp set, this looks like a straight sentiment, you can turn it. So this is what I did. I laid my block on top of the circle and I just curved it to somewhat match the curve of the circle because I could see right through there. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's like, you know, a little, like a kid made this nice little banner for his friend. Then I'm going to stamp that along the edge of the circle there we go. I'm just going to turn it over because I think I could do a better job on it. Actually, I'm going to just use the other side of the circle. Okay, that's a little better. And then now I'm going to use my smaller circle to um, just make that more like a banner there. Okay, and so that will be... If the smallest circle is one, this might be two. I will confirm that in my blog and on the description of the um, video. Okay, so I'm going to lie that there and get my other plate, run that through. Okay, then you have your ring and then you can just snip where you think that should be. Okay, you can line it up and just kind of snip. So that's what I did here. So I'll just use that one because it's ready to go. And now if I wanted a little bit more, you know what, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this. I wanted it to look a little bit more 3D. And you know how some, some banners usually kind of float a little bit. I am going to put just a little glue on the ends. And I'm going to try putting a little mini dimensional right in the middle there, as if it's coming toward me in the middle. I'm going to use my Take My Pick tool. Like I said before, you don't want to put too much thickness in here, but I'm going to give it a whirl. And I'm going to kind of encourage this to curl a little bit. Let's see what happens. Oh, I think that looks really cute. So it's popping out towards you a little bit here. So hopefully that's not adding too much thickness. Well, you know what? It works out fine because where the dimensional is here, the dimensionals are not in the same place in the entire card. So that's the other ones on the other side are here and this one is here. So that looks really nice how it's kind of popping out there. Oh, I'm glad I thought of that. Things you think of on the spur of the moment, right? Okay. And then just on another scrap paper, I'm going to put what that means a lot of. I guess it's supposed to sound a little bit like waddle, like penguins waddling. 
But anyway, I have it on the polar bear. Okay, it's like a little, except a lot. Okay, and then I'll glue that down underneath. Okay, so there we are for that. And then the last side, I'm going to make this a place where you can actually write. So again, very quickly, I'm going to put down just jade. Because you have all those colors in here. And I'm going to add another piece of white. So this is a place where you can sign your card. So this will measure three and a half by two. So you have that extra border around there. So we'll glue that down. I'm going to put my sentiment over here. Now this has a tiny happy birthday, which will fit this little scallop from the the contoured scallop. Um, here it is, right in front of me. Okay, so this is the rectangle, but I'm going to show you how to turn that into a square, make it a little bit smaller. I've showed that in some places to some of you, and I think I will... Um, hmm, let's do this one just jade, I guess, keeping with the background. So, a little happy birthday right, right there. Yay! When the pressure's on, you get nervous. Okay, so I'm going to take my die back out again. And you can do this with a lot of these shaped dies, rectangles, squares, whatever. Okay, so this is actually a, <laughs> a reject because when I originally cut it, I missed the end and it didn't kind of work there. So I said, well, you know, someday I'll use that and maybe tuck it under something. Well, here you go. I'm using it again. See, I tell you, I don't throw anything away. Okay, so we're going to bring your die over a little bit further. And you can feel how these little indentations and the scallops fit right into what you've already die cut out. So I can feel I've sort of locked right into that spot there. And I'm going to put my plate back on and run that through the machine. And it will cut out a smaller rectangle. That will fit my little piece up there. Look how cute that is. Right? So let's glue it down. And then the soft sea foam. Oh no, look what happened here. Got my finger in something. I'll have to cover that up later. Okay, I'll try to pull it off a little bit later. But anyway, see, mistakes happen, guys, even with me. <laughs> so here we go. We got it all. Thanks for your patience in designing all of that. And what's really cool? It all lays flat and can fit into your regular envelope. And of course, you can use one of these pretty DSPs to um, mask the flap of your envelope as well. Okay, so there's your pinwheel tower card. And stay tuned for when I decorate this one with the hand-penned petals and the coordinating dies. Okay, so our pinwheel tower card with the beautifully penned DSP is complete and before I show it to you let me just remind you that this beautiful DSP these beautiful patterns are only available as a free item during celebrations so you only have until September 30th 2021 to place a $50 order and get this for free so this or the penguin paper and some other uh, great qualifying items are in that celebration brochure. Okay, so here we are. This turned into a thank you card. So using those patterns, I made thanks and I used the, um, 
hand penned flowers. Notice I took this big one and I just cut up smaller sections of the flowers and placed them around the card. So we have that page. We turn it. Thanks. You're absolutely amazing. The world needs more of you. And thanks for being you. Who wouldn't love this card? Oh, I just think it came out so sweet. Um, I have so many great friends I could send it to also. It's going to be tough to decide. I might just have to make more of it while I'm at it. So it's just what an amazing little card. And it stands up so nicely. And whoever receives this is going to just love it. Notice this one was a lot less work. I just put a lot of labels on with a little flower using fresh freesia, soft sea foam, and um, so saffron. And just kept it way more simple in the penguins. But look how sweet that is. Didn't even decorate these size. I just wanted to keep that plain. Okay, like a little border. So I hope you like these tutorials. And remember I said I'd give you a bonus today. So I talked about making a coordinating envelope and decorating the flap. I'm going to quickly show you how to do that. Taking another pattern from the beautifully penned designer series paper. And I'm, we're going to put a little bit of glue. Well, not just a little bit, but we're going to make sure we have good adhesive on here. I'm going to make sure I smear it to the edges because I don't want that getting caught in the mail like in any machines or anything but I don't want it coming out either so I want to make sure it's thin on the edges but right to the edge do you know what I mean okay so you're going to take that and you're going to take a piece of your designer series paper that's at least about two and three quarters by six. Your envelope here in the U.S. is five and three quarters. So go six so you have a little extra to play with. And we're going to lay it right over that flap. Just like that. Give it a good rub. Make sure it's adhered. And then with your snips, just love these paper snips. They are so sharp. You've got a nice point on there for doing any fussy cutting. These are like the best scissors ever. Okay, and we're just going to trim around and you will have just kicked up your fabulous card another notch. So when somebody sees this envelope in the mail, they'll know before they even open it that something really special is inside. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so thanks for visiting. Don't forget to go to my blog for more information. And while you're there, sign up on my mailing list. I'd love to stay in touch with you and keep you posted about other Steppin' Up um, specials and some of my classes and my tutorials. So have a great day and happy stamping, everybody. Hope you tried this power card.